Alrighty traders, Taylor Horton checking in with the nightly video here for Tuesday, June 22nd. It's already June. It's almost July. So this year is flying by. Um, but as always, interesting stuff here from the market. So if we rewind the tape a little bit and go back to last week, had a bit, a little, a uh, little bit of pressure here on the overall market. So we've been watching this daily squeeze on the S&P 500 for well over a month now. And even with a little bit of back and forth here, we're still pretty much trapped in the same range. Or from the perspective of trading the squeeze, we're still stuck in phase one. We're still stuck in the buildup of energy phase, and we're still waiting on phase two, which is the release of that energy. So a whole bunch of back and forth here, and we pretty much find ourselves where we've been. So last week, things were getting a little bit, a uh, little bit sketchy out here. You know, pretty much at this market right now, uh, let's call it a tug of war. So you've got the industrials last week. They're breaking down. They're losing structure. And this is a pretty good flush. Uh, we, we flushed to the minus three ATR extension. That's a pretty good flush. So the industrials are breaking down last week. The financials are breaking down last week to minus three. So another good flush. And then the transports, which can oftentimes lead the way down for the market, they lost structure. They broke down. And they hit minus three. So you got some distribution in a few different pockets of the market last week. Uh, and even energy here, which rebounded nicely today. Uh, another group, recent leadership, that got a little bit sketched last week. So into the weekend, you're getting distribution across a few different sectors. And that puts a little bit of pressure here on the overall market. Now for the last two days, we've seen the market get a good bounce here. And it's due to two reasons. One... All those sectors that are push, putting pressure on the market, they were due for a bounce. So for the same reasons, we don't try to go long up here at plus three ATRs. We try to avoid going short at minus three. Once something has fallen minus three ATRs under its 21 EMA, could continue to flush, but there is a growing probability you're going to get a bounce at least back towards the minus one, if not the 21 EMA. So we get a big whoop in here last week, but we're pretty cooked quickly. And you're seeing the bounce here. So the market's recovering a bit because of this bounce in the industrials. It's recovering a bit last few days because of the bounce here in the financials. And it's not a huge bounce. And then the transports, they're at minus three. So they're bouncing as well. So the few different sectors that are putting pressure on the market into Friday, they're all bouncing early this week. So that lifts the market back up. But more importantly, while you're getting distribution over there, You've got clear leadership over here in technology. So technology has seemingly taken the baton from financials, from transports, from industrials, and it's pulling the market forward here, or at least it's holding the market up. Uh, I wouldn't say you look at the spy chart. It, we're not quite breaking out yet, but the cues are keeping the ship afloat here. So this is the most interesting thing about the market right now. We saw warning signs last week with distribution in a few different pockets. But then we can uh, we see continuation of strength and momentum over here. So for the next few weeks, this is what's going to be interesting. I think a few different you know questions we can ask of the market right now. Is this going to be your continued leadership? So as the cues are up here at plus two, few things to take into consideration. As good as Amazon looks, it was good today into Prime Day. This could be your continued leader here but it's a little bit too extended. I think you take entries back here at the 21, you take profits on this push. So you know, Amazon's leading the way forward, but we're pretty extended. So maybe it continues to run. It also could be due for a pullback. You gotta see it from both perspectives. Microsoft is very much the same thing. Here's your leadership. It could continue to rally, but you're up here at plus two, plus three ATR. It could also be due for a pullback. So if anything, you got to pick your spots wisely. So it's going to be interesting to see. Do the Microsofts, the Amazons, the Googles of the world continue to rally and continue to hold this market up? Or as we're approaching plus two to plus three ATR, do we start to see a flush back down towards the 21? Now, I would imagine if the Qs do simply come back down to earth a little bit, and then you have the continuation of the distribution in financials, industrials, and transports. Then I think at that point, once your leadership is cooling down, technology here, then I think you could see the market begin to fade. Vice versa, industrials, transports, financials continue to bounce. Technology continues to lead the way here. Now there's not so much pressure on the market. Then you potentially see this daily squeeze fired towards the upside. So, you know, on my end right now, 
As things are breaking down last week, getting a little bit sketchy, I came in here and sold a call credit spread on the SPX for August expiration. So not only do I have plenty of time, I got short strikes up here at 4,300. So basically the bet that I placed is that as we roll into July and August, the market's not going to be above 4,300. Now, with things and we're gaining some structure here in a pretty damn impressive fashion, this is also a nice insurance policy in my back pocket. You know, I can have that in my back pocket, and if the market does go sideways or it does roll over a bit from here, there's some really good premium coming in. But if anything, market holds up just fine, I got that insurance policy in my back pocket, and here's what I'm going to look for. I'm going to look for stocks within sectors that are showing signs of leadership. Right now, there's no doubt about it. That's technology. Then I'm going to look for a good-looking setup. I like Amazon, like I mentioned. I can't get long at plus three. I like Microsoft. I can't get long at plus two to plus three ATR. So here's your leadership within technology. Here's the kind of setup I'm looking for. So for Google, you've got a daily squeeze. You've got positively stacked moving averages. You have monthly, weekly, three-day, and a daily chart. 10x bars are green, which in plain English, bullish momentum is increasing. And now check this out. We got what we call a Cinco squeeze. Five of them. You got a daily squeeze. You got a four hour squeeze with a good structure. Inside of that, you got a two hour squeeze with a good structure. And inside of that, you've got an hourly squeeze. And inside of that, you got a 30 minute squeeze. Perfect. I got a short on that expires in August. So I got my insurance policy. If this market wants to crap out a bit, I'm going to be in good shape. However, if we're going to continue to rally and if the, uh, the leadership is going to continue to be from the tech stocks here, I'm going to trade something like a Google. So for Google today in the options room, small trade here into the end of the week. We did a Friday expiration put credit spread with short strikes at 2430. And what I'm looking for is that this 30 minute squeeze fires long. That should then trigger the one hour. That should then trigger the two hour. Ultimately, if the four hour squeeze fires long, we're looking for a push into brand new all time highs into the end of the week. And we're going to collect some premium from those short strikes at 2430. Or things get a little bit sketchy again into the end of the week. Technology cools down. Industrials, transports, financials, they get to rolling back over. And we're going to have to manage Google accordingly, but we got that short position in our back pocket. So never a dull moment here in these markets. I suggest you keep things balanced and, um, you know, never marry your ideas. I was coming into this week looking for the market to continue to flush based on Friday's action. But what I'm not going to do is marry that idea and sit here and watch the market rally higher. So if we're going to make a move up into my short strike at 4,300, I'm not going to sit here and do nothing. It's the worst thing you could do. You don't marry that one idea. You look for the next best opportunity. So I'll hold the short position, but you better believe that the market wants to rally another 2 to 3%. I'm going to latch onto something like a Google, and I'm definitely going to take advantage of that upside momentum. So few things for you all to focus on. We know where the weakness has been, though it's bouncing a bit. Uh, finance, transports, industrials, etc. And we know where the leadership has been in technology. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, you know, the relationship between some of the weaker sectors and the leadership over the next few days and over the next few weeks. So as always, I'll keep you all posted, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow's session already. So as always, we appreciate you listening in. If you haven't already, go on ahead and subscribe. Check us out at simplertrading.com. Until the next video, talk to you all soon. Trade safe. What's up traders? This is Taylor from Simpler Trading. I wanted to thank you for watching our video and if you liked the video, go on ahead and comment down below, hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon to get a notification anytime we upload our next video. And of course, if you want to watch us trade live in real time with our own money, check us out at simplertrading.com. Until then, trade safe and I'll catch you in the next video.